Okay, um, today we're going to be working on setting up the mount plates for a backhoe on a John Deere 4210. Um, these plates are used across a lot more than just this model. They're probably the same across the 4000, all the 4000 series machines and even 3000 series machines. So um, once you get the plates on, you have the ability to then mount the backhoe uh, with the with the way that the John Deere four point quick connect attachment uh, is set up with the backhoe. Uh, these plates, they bolt right on to the axle on each side and they, um, they let you mount the 47 backhoe uh, with just these two plates. You can also mount the 48. However, there is an additional uh, bracket that you need for the 48 just because it's a lot heavier and uh, it pulls a lot more on the rear end on the on the machine and so you don't want to mount uh, the 48 with just the two mount plates you want to make sure that if you're going to do that you get the additional um, third bracket which i believe the third bracket mounts more from the underneath just to give it more support um, but they do recommend uh, john deere um, says you can mount the 47 uh, with just the two plates with no problem and so that's what we're going to do today and the way you mount these is really really straightforward you just take the existing bolts that are in um, the axle on either side so you're going to have a, uh, about five or six bolts there's one here and like i said there's about five or six on each side and then you just simply um, take the plate and you're going to run the bolts put the plate on run the bolts through the plate and then torque it down to the specs that they that they give you uh, so I'm going to start this now. I've got um, both plates and I am going to see um, how this goes and I will be back shortly. Okay, so um, I was able to get one plate on and I wanted to, I wanted to show you uh, there's like three things um, that I learned and I can offer as a tip if you're going to do this yourself. Uh, the first the first major thing is that um, the bolts that are on there are about five inches in length so when you when you put the plate on there and you try to reuse the existing bolts um, they're too short they're not going to reach uh, they may catch by one or two threads but it's not nearly enough to, to secure the plates onto the onto the axle right so so what I'm going to show you is kind of what I did and the solution I came up with so that you can do um, a similar thing, right? So here's, here's the four bolts that come off the, off the machine when you, go to, when you go to put the plate on, right? They're about five inches long and um, the bolt you're going to need is about a six inch bolt. But um, these bolts are actually specially... Uh, special bolts that are designed uh, as, at a higher strength. They're called metric uh, 10.9 strength. I think the M stands for metric. I know it does for the metric 24, but I'm not sure uh, if the 10.9 is, is the category or, or, the, or the grade, right? So sometimes you refer to these as like grade eight bolts. Um, the M 10.9 strength bolts are probably one of the strongest ones you can buy. So um, I don't believe you can just go to like Tractor Supply and buy these. You, you want to you wanna make sure you don't go there and buy a lower strength bolt because what's going to happen is um, the bolt could shear off or the bolt could strip um, the threads in the axles when you're using the backhoe. You don't want that to happen, obviously. So where you can buy these and, and where you can buy these online is a place called Big Master. Um, they're great. I've been using them for years for, for hydraulic seals, bolts, pretty much anything you want to fabricate, um, they sell uh, parts for. So McMaster is really good. They had these, you know, and I, I bought eight of these, um, you know, four for each side. And I bought them in the same exact strength and the same exact size, which is the metric 24 size. And the length, of course, I went to a six inch length versus the five inch length. So <clears throat> that's a real good solution to um, getting the bolts. You can probably buy these bolts through John Deere. Um, for me, uh, it was just convenient to go on the McMaster site and order them and their shipping um, is relatively quick. 
and I'm all set up with an account, so it was relatively painless, and that's why I went with McMaster. Uh, John Deere is great too. Um, I'm all set up with them, and I, I can't say anything bad about John Deere. It's just I didn't know exactly how to get to the right um, bolt because this is kind of a, a longer bolt than they would provide you know, from the factory for this uh, for this part of the machine. Okay, so that was the first that was the first thing, um, and it's kind of a, a showstopper, obviously. So you want to make sure you get these bolts before you attempt this because you just have to put it all back together and have to, you have to try it again once you get the bolts. The second, the second thing to keep in mind is when you put this plate on there, there's gonna be a wiring harness. And the wiring harness is really what's feeding the um, lights on the, on the ROPS, on the rollover protection system, right? So if you looked at these lights, these guys are coming through um, down through the rocks and they, they actually come out on the bottom and you can kind of see in there and you get some light. You can kind of see in there and you can see how this, this wire now goes under here. It's kind of going under here and then cleanly through the other side. And the, and the big thing is, is that you're not pinching any wires between the plate and the axle and the one wire harness that's gonna to wanna to get pinched in there naturally unless you move it or reroute it is this guy. It's the, it's the lights on the ROPS on the right side and the left side. So <clears throat> what you do is you simply just take the, you take the wire tie and you just cut it and you remove it. And I probably have it on the floor still, so you're gonna take that off and just cut it and remove it. It was holding it up at a higher spot, um, which then gives you enough slack to route it. You wanna go behind the bracket this is the only spot that I could find that would allow me to route this behind the bracket without being pinched. You see how it's easily movable there? So that's, that's kind of key, right? You don't want to pinch that wire harness because you'll, you'll damage those wires, especially if this is moving around and it's gonna, it's gonna rub you know, back and forth. So that was tip number two. Tip number three um, is kind of big too because the way this inner fender is set up uh, from the factory and maybe it's just this particular uh, model is that it didn't give me enough room to get that socket in there to get the to get the bolt out let me show you what I mean so if I if I took this socket and I was to try to go in there for that bolt um, it obviously won't it won't go right because you have a you have a guard here so I could have got around that by trying to put a swivel on it and then trying to sneak around it but um, these bolts are on there really good it's over 600 pounds on these bolts so uh, you want to get a clean fit with your socket and the only way to really do that is if you you drill a hole uh, through this inner fender which is just plastic so you can just use any any wood based um, drill bit that's like an inch and a half or two inch uh, maybe smaller I forget the exact size to, to give yourself a nice opening to get that socket on there if you don't get that socket on there you put you put the pressure or the force to get that bolt out, it's gonna turn the it's gonna turn the top of the bolt, it's gonna round it, and you don't wanna do that because you'll never get that bolt out. It's it's one of those bolts where um, you can put an impact on it, but the impact, most impacts only go up to about 600 pounds. Uh, so you're not even gonna be able to get these these off with impacts. You really gotta get um, something like this. I'll show you. Something like this, right? You wanna you want to get your ratchet, heavy ratchet, a good set of sockets that are made for impacts, but you want to put an, an extension on the, on the ratchet, and that way you can pull over 600 pounds of pressure to release, to undo these bolts. These bolts are rated, I want to say, for about 1,000 pounds of pressure, so you're not going to snap the bolt um, to get these out, and once you, once you crack the the first part of the turn, they're much easier, obviously, to get these out, but they're on there with about 600 pounds of, of torque. So to crack them, you're gonna have to go about 650, 700 pounds. You won't break them because they're rated for about 1,000 pounds dry. Um, so don't worry about that, but get a good ratchet, a good uh, pipe on the end of it that's strong, and uh, you, can, you can break them, you can crack the threads, and then you can turn them, you can back them out all the way. Now that's the old ones, obviously, right? So you're not gonna you reuse the old ones, but they're the same exact uh, strength, the original ones. Okay, so that's that's really um, what it looks like. Those are the three tips I can offer. 
Again, make sure you have the, the longer bolts before you take this, you tear this all down. I took the tire off, obviously, as well, because you just, you just can't get in there without the tire being off. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and then uh, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I've got the other side uh, bracket on, and basically it was the same procedure. Um, you wanna get that wiring harness to go underneath the bracket, just like in here. Uh, same exact um, thing, you have to cut the zip tie and then just pull the wire down and it's long enough to make it under. Um, and I also drilled, you know, the same, the same hole for the, for the socket to fit nice and clean and the inner fender. Um, the one thing that I can add as a tip is that on the left side, um, there is a spacer that is required on that bolt that is closest to the front of the machine. So this bolt here, um, what you'll find is that when you tighten this plate down, it fits flush against the axle um, like it should, but when you go to uh, torque down this last bolt, there's about three eighths of an inch um, gap between the plate and this one area uh, where it mounts to. And, and I'm just thinking that that's obviously an engineering design thing that had to happen for you know, a good reason. So um, when you look at the kit, there is a spacer that they sell in here um, I didn't have the spacer, so I just made up a 3 8 inch uh, spacer out of two washers. Uh, put two washers together and just kind of put them in there. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can kind of see behind there, there's, there's two washers between the, the axle and the, and the plate. And I also put a washer, um, you know, behind the bolt head itself because I had the extra one in my hand, I said, I'll just use it. What you, what you might find on, on these bolts, they are six inch, like I said. Um, if you find that the threads are actually bottoming out on the axle, meaning that when you go to torque them, they're tight, but they're not actually pulling the plate tightly against the axle, that's because the threads could be bottoming out on the inner part of the, of the axle, right? So, um, that the only concern with not getting that tight, obviously, is the plate. The plate isn't going to be touching, you know, fully or fully torqued by touching the axle area. So you want to make sure if you see that, um, you can add some washers. Add some washers, or when you buy the bolts, get the five and three quarter inch versus six inch or five and a half inch versus six inch bolts, and that would also. Um, fix that threading issue where the threads are bottoming out uh, inside the axle and not allowing it to go any further. So <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Um, this project with all the fabrication, which wasn't a lot, you know, just making a washer or spacer or, you know, cutting a hole or rerouting some, some wiring harnesses is not considered really custom fabrication. It's just things you don't expect to, to have to deal with. I would say the whole thing uh, was about two hours, um, and the big showstopper is the bolts, right? Get the bolts before you start. Like I said, I, I use the six inch ones. Um, next time I do it, I will probably go down just maybe by a quarter inch or a half inch if I can get that same bolt just a little bit shorter, and that way um, there's no issues with the bolts being just a hair too long and the threads either bottoming out or um, you know, leaving the plate not quite tight as maybe it should be. This is on there really good. There's about, uh, I wanted to mention the torque specs that I used. I don't know, I don't know what they should be, but if you look up this bolt, it can handle, um, about six or 700 pounds, right? It doesn't mean you want to torque it to that much, but it can handle about that much. And I think the, the breaking point is about a thousand pounds and, and obviously you don't want to torque them down that tight. But I think when I torque these down, I'm probably approaching a 300 pounds uh, point, right? It's between two and 300 pounds. Almost as, as, as much as you can get on it with a half inch uh, socket with a small uh, pipe on there for an extension. And uh, you will feel it's about two to 300 foot pounds of torque on each one of these. Again, you can go much higher um, and they probably do from the factory, but um, I don't think you really need to hit them that hard 
Uh, you got four on there and uh, it should be plenty of strength. Okay, I hope this helps uh, you out. That's about it.